H.R. 7120 contains in it a change in qualified immunity, basically an elimination of qualified immunity, and that's important and it's good. Mr. Mosh got out front on that, and Mr. Nadler, Mr. Butterfield, and I had a bill on it too, and others. Uh, it's an important part of civil rights litigation, but the employer has to be made responsible as well. And because of that, I'm going to propose a bill uh, to have respondeat superior relationship with the employer and make part of that reform that respondeat superior will apply to 1983 civil rights actions. Mr. Crump, your experience with uh, civil rights actions, and I know you've got a lot, would having a respondeat superior a relationship with the employer be effective in uh, seeing that conduct that was improper was changed? Absolutely. And also, I think qualified immunity, as I've said earlier, allows for police to act with impunity. Uh, I think there's a reason we see black men mostly, but also black women being killed by police over and over again, and nobody ever being held accountable, uh, and either criminal or civil. And this qualified immunity, almost as if we're condoning it, almost as if black lives don't matter. And that's why, hopefully with this moment, we can do something to change that. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor Morial, we, part of this bill is, is a different forum for judging police misconduct, an independent prosecutor to determine if a law enforcement officer may have violated the law in using deadly force or force at all. Uh, you've been a mayor of a major city. You helped clean up the New Orleans Police Department when you were there, and that was a tough thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel uh, a, a provision which we've got in this bill and which uh, Ms. Gupta had in her recommendations to have an independent prosecutor would, would help restore confidence in the public. I think, I think it's, uh, it's an essential element. The, the working relationship between the normal prosecutor, whether it's a state's attorney, a district attorney, at the local level, and the police department is a hand-in-glove relationship. Uh, and therefore... The friendships are developed, a working relationship is developed, and it becomes difficult sometimes for local prosecutors to indeed uh, investigate and bring charges against police departments or police officers. In the federal system, you'll find sometimes the same thing, right, where United States attorneys may work very closely with uh, FBI may work very closely with local law enforcement on joint task forces and strike forces to ferret out crime. So independent prosecutors, I also think it would allow for there to be expertise, uh, teams of investigators that understand these sorts of cases. It's just an idea whose time has come. The record, unfortunately, uh, has been, whether it's in Ferguson uh, with Prosecutor McCullough, whether it's been in the Eric Garner case with the Staten Island a district attorney, and you could cite numerous examples of just instances where many times these local prosecutors cannot bring themselves to bring charges even when the evidence is clear. So I think this is a, this is a reform whose time has come. I think it's a reform that it should not be difficult for people to agree to, uh, and, and I think it would be a vast improvement over the status quo. Thank you, sir. With, with the local prosecutor, you also have, you know, the police unions make endorsements, as do the Deputy Sheriff's Association, and they endorse the DA or they don't endorse the DA, and they make contributions as well. So while there's the hand-in-glove relationship and, and of them being witnesses, and a lot of former officers end up being investigators for the DA, they also have that political you're, problem. You're absolutely right, uh, Congressman Cohen, and, and that working relationship is so close and so uh, so substantial. This, this bill also, that was... Uh, Another bill I had that I worked with Lacey Clay on, and it's a part of this bill, is uh, a requirement of, of a reportage of deadly force incidents. Uh, it would help me now. I tried to do some research myself, and maybe y'all can help me. The, 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 the most egregious civil rights cases I know of are ones where white officers killed black officers, black citizens unlawfully. Garner, Floyd, Necks, shootings, whatever. Other than St. Paul, Minnesota, I didn't see any instances where black officers were alleged to have done the same type of thing. Is, 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 is it because we don't have statistics to know it, 
or is there something that that says about a systemic um, racism? I will say this: just you know, we had instances in New Orleans where black officers killed black citizens. I can't think of an instance where a black officer killed. I can't think of an instance, one instance where a black officer killed a white citizen. Uh, there may be aberrations. But were those lawful? Was lawful actions? No, not lawful at all. No, no, they, they were acts of acts of of misconduct and acts of brutality. But I think, you know, there's a great database that the Washington Post has that pretty much over the last five years can give you pretty much chapter and verse on all killings of citizens by police. Thank you. And I the, members, the balance of my time. Member, uh, the member, the member uh, yields back.